What's up, everybody? Hey, this is Justin, and I, if I said I wasn't excited about this review, probably the most excited out of all the reviews I've done, I would be lying. And as a Christian man, I just will not do that. So this is my review of the, I'm going to try to say this. I, I say Shira Gorov. I'm not sure if that's correct. I know I've heard Bearded Gear kind of struggle with it too, but I'm going to say Shira Gorov. F3 in micarta with orange accents and LMAX blade. And this has the single row bearing system. This is the first Shira Gorov I have ever handled, I've ever owned. Um, I've been looking at them for quite a while and I've really been on the fence for a long time because they're, you know, I read all these things about them that they were really nice. They felt great in the hand, their action was second to none materials were excellent but then i always you know heard and, and saw how expensive they were and you know when i'm spending that kind of money on a knife <clears throat> i really have to think about what i'm purchasing because there are a lot of options when you start looking at this this type of price point for a knife but needless to say um actually i'm not even going to address that you'll just have to watch the rest of the video to see my opinion but very excited, um, really, really thankful and, and grateful that I have this knife. And yeah, there were a few surprises with it that uh, I honestly caught me off guard, which I'm gonna talk about right now. So going through my normal scale, um, starting off with blade steel, this is LMAX. And they always put the blade steel on the, on the blade, which you can see there, LMAX. LMAX is a steel that I don't have a lot of experience with. I believe it originates from Italy. A lot of Italian knives use LMAX. I used to have a Spyderco Lion Spy that was an LMAX. Yeah, I, I just don't, I don't know a ton about it. I think in terms of performance, based on the data, the graphs that I reviewed, it's somewhere under M390, 20CV, 204P. Um, maybe under S90V in terms of edge retention, but then it's above like an S35VN, S45VN, um, those types of steel. So it's, it's definitely on the higher end of things. Um, definitely not a low grade steel. And I believe the stainless properties of it are, are pretty strong as well. I never had issues with my line spy. And I haven't had any, any issues with, with this knife either, but you know, as you can, as you've probably seen in my other videos, I keep my knives pretty well oiled. There we go. So you can see here, just kind of leave a little bit of oil on the blade, you know, collects lint, but it's a sign that it's protected, I guess. So anyway, for blade steel, I gave it an eight. I think it's fair. Um, Cause I had the exo set at a 10 for 204P. So, in terms of clip, moving on, if you look at the clip here, it's a very clean looking clip with a very cool design. Um, it's sort of, let me close this and I'll cut myself. It's sort of, it contacts back here at the back, sorry, it's upside down. But then if you flip it around on the front, there's actually, oops, there's actually like some space here between the clip and the handle scale. It's, it's a really interesting design. It, it works really well. Um, the retention is is very, very strong. Um, I'm, I'm pulling pretty hard with my, my thumb there. Um, decent amount of ramp here. <clears throat> the only issue I've had with this is it doesn't seem to like thicker shorts. Any pair of jeans I've, I've carried this knife in, it's been fine. But it doesn't seem to like thicker shorts. I had a pair of cargo shorts on the other day, and it didn't like those too much. So that's that's really the only issue I found with that clip. But in terms of styling and appearance, probably one of the favorite one of my favorite clips I've ever had on any knife. I just think it looks really, really excellent. Just very clean, nice lines. It also flows with the design of the handle. So you can see here, it kind of has an, an angular area, flattens out, <clears throat> and then under here, it's sort of an arc. 
which is the same way the handle is designed. You kind of have a, an arc or an angle back here and it sort of flattens out at the top. So just a very, very nice congruent design between the handle and the clip. I gave the clip a seven and the only reason it's not higher is because of the issues that it has with thicker shorts or maybe some kind of pants that would be heavier, like heavy denim or something. But yeah, I think a seven is very fair. Retention's really good. <clears throat> not hard to withdraw the knife from my pocket. And yeah, just a, a very nice, aesthetically pleasing clip design as well. Uh, lock type on this is a, I'm not sure if this is considered a liner lock or if it's in the same vein as, I, I believe this is considered a frame lock, like the, the Rayot Jack 2.0. But you can see the lock bar here, very early lock up on this one. I've only had this knife maybe, I don't know, maybe a month. But yeah, it's a frame lock flipper and it locks up very, very tight. There's no blade play, no lock rock at all. The, the uh, lock's easy to disengage. You can see the cutout there. And yeah, absolutely no complaints with that at all. <clears throat> so I gave... I don't rank the lock type. I almost give it a score, but yeah, it's just a it's a nice nice design, um, and it's it is like I mentioned a frame lock. In terms of materials, this one was an easy one for me. It you know I always go back to carbon fiber, um, air you know, air aerospace grade aluminum stuff like that. <clears throat> this one has it, it doesn't have any carbon fiber but it has a lot of titanium i believe these these scales here are titanium and then it has the steel lock bar insert there the handles are micarta which is new for me I, this is the first micarta knife i've ever owned or even handled i believe and then it also has these really nice orange standoffs around the it's like a pivot color and then as the backspacer here, just very nice. And I think these are G10, but yeah, all the materials on this knife are very, very nice. My card is, the machining on the my card is amazing. I don't know if you can see it in the camera here, but it kind of has those very even consistent grind, or not grind lines, but machining lines. It's hard to see in the camera, but yeah, the titanium's just machined expertly. So I gave the materials on this knife a nine, and I think that's very well earned. In terms of size, this is actually, this knife is a lot bigger than I thought it was when I ordered it. So I have pretty big hands. Um, you can see here, even in my hand, I mean, it still looks pretty sizable. Uh, I'll put it next to my normal video companion. So here's the Spyderco Manix. In Spy 27, try to line that up. So you can see here it's, you know, about maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch longer. And then against the 110 here, it's about the same length as the 110. Blade length is significantly longer though, just because of the way the blade's designed and how this angle cuts back toward the handle. But yeah, as I mentioned, very it's a it's a large knife. Um, very, it's, it's sizable in the pocket too, because you can see here how thick the handle is. I'll just compare it to the Manix, because it's a Manix lightweight. So, significantly thicker than the Manix. I'll put these back to back so you can kind of see a little bit better. Yeah, so, but it, I mean, it carries well. As I mentioned, the clip's, the clip's excellent. So... There's the size comparison for you. In terms of action, I mean, what more can I say? It's a sheer Gorov. I give the action a nine. <clears throat> it's not quite uh, drop shutty, fully drop shutty. I don't know if that's a word yet, but I think it'll get there. I haven't put any oil in it, but you can see, you know, it, it very freely does drop. Um, I think if I, if I can get my finger out of the way, yeah, it'll, it'll guillotine my finger. And it doesn't quite go all the way after that, but it's, you know, it's about as good as you can get. I suspect the multi-row bearing system would be a little bit smoother, 
but you know, no complaints at all. And something else I wanted to highlight is just the sound of the action. It's just very, very mechanical. It, it the best way I can describe it is it's almost like it's almost like when you go rollerblading and your skates are going along that smooth floor. That's for some reason that's what it reminds me of. Like just the feel of it when I flip it. It's just a one of the best actions I've ever felt. I think the Norseman I had, um, I probably say. The action on that was a little bit better, maybe a little bit smoother. I shouldn't say better, but this is really, really good. So I gave that a nine. Uh, hardware, this does have the Shira Gwarov proprietary hardware. You can see the, the screw there and at the back. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to hate on this too much because I've heard that you can actually get a Phillips head screwdriver in there to disassemble these. You have to be careful so you don't nick the the screws that they include with the knife but i've heard you can do that so i gave this a score of six i think it's it's fair i mean it's still proprietary it's still annoying you know use something else but in at the same time it's kind of a sheer gorov um trademark i mean i had when i was at smoky mountain knife works i had this in my pocket and you know the only thing you could see was this top screw for the clip and one of the guys recognized the knife just based on this top screw so you know, it's, it's definitely a hallmark of this brand. Um, you can buy tools for these. I think I saw some on Recon One for, I don't know, 65 bucks. The Shira Gorov ones are way more expensive, around $300. But yeah, I think a six is fair. And then in terms of just, you know, disassembling the knife, which I, I tend to talk about in the hardware section, um, it, it shouldn't be too complicated. Just watch out for those little ball bearings that are floating around in that pivot. Don't let those run away. Uh, moving on to price. Um, I gave this a six. So I talked about price a little bit in, in the first part of my video. And the reason why it's not higher is because this is a very, very expensive knife. This one was, I think I paid $695 for this, which is one of the cheapest sheer Gorovs you can buy. Um, if you go up to multi-row bearings, you know, M M390 carbon fiber scales, you're looking at maybe a thousand plus, actually almost guaranteed to be a thousand plus. You can pick some of these up on the secondary market for cheaper, maybe 550, 600 bucks. But, you know, at the same time, after I got it in, in hand and, and flipped it a few times and carried it, I can kind of see why it is so expensive. I mean, I, I talked about it a little bit, but all the machining is just excellent on this knife. I mean, the titanium liners there, the scales here, the micarta is just incredible. I mean, there's, I've looked this knife over many times and I have not found any flaw in it. Um, so yeah, it's just a very, I mean, even the, the finish on the blade is just perfectly consistent. Um, and the grind is, is also very, very consistent as well. It's just a, you know, they're, they're definitely incredibly good at their craft. So I think giving this, um, a six for price is, you know, maybe a little bit harsh, but it, it is expensive, but I, you know, I, I still think it's worth it. So in terms of quality, you know, I sort of already addressed that in, in what I was just talking about. I mean, the quality is just amazing on this. You know, it's expensive, but it's it's probably it's one of the best knives, one of the one of the most well made knives that I've ever handled. The only comparison I would would give would maybe be the Rayot, the Jack 2.0, the Grimsmo Norseman, um, some of the Spyderco Tai Chung models. Um, like a, a Schlees buoy. I don't know if I said that correctly, but those come close, but this is, you know, sort of in a, in a league of its own. So for quality, I gave it a 10. I think that's, you know, very appropriate for this knife. And then finally competition. This is, um, you know, as with some of the other ones I've reviewed a little bit difficult. I mean, you could look at a Norseman, but I think those run around 900 now, 925. So this is $200 less. 
than that and the action is maybe just slightly less smooth so you know maybe consider that competition but not really in the same price range um something else that might compete would be maybe a koenig arius those are around five to six hundred i believe if you can find them um the jack 2.0 would be would be pretty good competition although this is made in russia that one's made in china i'm sure the the expenses to make this one are a little bit higher so just some thoughts on that but um anyway so in total um the score for this knife is 55 which i'll post up the the five knives i've reviewed so far so you guys can take a look at all the scores and kind of compare them but just going over from top to bottom the buck 110 was at a 43 the exo set was at a 46 the f3 which is this model is at a 55 the cabela's 940 is at a 56 and the 940-1 is at a 57 so the top three are pretty close and this one you know just overall conclusion this is a very expensive knife but it's also a very very well made knife so and it's one that i would highly recommend if you haven't handled a Shirogorov, definitely take a look. And, you know, if you have the money, um, I would I would definitely consider picking one of these up. So anyway, that's my review. And uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And uh, have a great rest of the day. And we'll talk to you in the next one. See you guys.